and the rare front, uh, for me, as I perceive it, is, has a lot to do with um, this wonderful and undescribable uh, relation uh, to the other, to the object uh, in front of the camera. Um, I don't hardly know any other filmmakers who respect, uh, who have such a big respect that they are so shy of even to uh, shoot the face. Um, and uh, this, this, this movement between out of focus, between uh, the back and the front uh, and, uh, and uh, through the space, uh, which is uh, very uh, often a very miracle space, um, is for me um, an expression of um, respect and uh, of dignity of the object um, and uh, nothing which is connected with horror uh, for me or with, with, with fright. It's just an enormous um, uh, respect towards what I'm showing. And this is the responsibility of filmmakers. They have no other way uh, to show that. They, have, they can give time to what they show and they can create distances and they can play with this. That's it. I mean, that was not a question. <laughs> Please, I took the privilege of yeah, being a professor to say something. I feel, uh, no, I feel that there's a very odd um, temporal sensation in all of your work. And as we know, time has a forward bias. My favorite definition of time is, is that time exists in order to prevent everything from happening at once. But as we know, in terms of human perception, time has a forward bias. In your work, I feel a pull in reverse, um, and this amazing force, a, 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 a kind of eternity of, I'm not sure how to call it, it's something like psyche is dungeon. Um, at any rate, this reverse pull, you feel very, very strong. I feel very, very strongly in your work. I mean, you know, there, there are people and relations and objects in the world which are aligned with this kind of forward bias of time. And then there are others which you feel that are pulling, really, really pulling in a reverse direction. So even in this last piece, it was most pronounced. So the rhythms were almost anti anapexic so You had to almost fight against your own heartbeat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm which was a really evocative um, exploration of madness as a result of this really struggle against your own heartbeat, really. Thank you. I hope that, that's very nice, very beautiful. Um, I know that when we were listening to Stockhausen, you know, we could only listen to about 10 seconds a day. Yes. We had no idea what was beyond 11 and 12. And so we, we fixed our brains on trying to achieve seven seconds a day. And we, we laid certain bits of unused footage in front. So we went to the 20th seconds, suddenly there was a revelation. And I, I think we, we, we took energy from the fact that there were some fabulous accidents in, with synchronization with this music, that would, which would not, could not come from pre- uh, Storyboarding or, or sitting down and saying, like, I think he or she does this or, or whatever. I think a lot was dependent on pure accident. And I know the day that when Stockhausen wrote us, um, he said, uh, the film, will, the music will arrive the 21st of August at 12 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when we put it on the, um, we immediately had it transferred to magnetic tape 35 minutes. And we put it on the steam deck, and we had already been doing tests. And so we ran the steam deck, stopped it. I remember shifting it, like something like seven frames, and then played it, and it was in sync. We said, we're off. <laughs> we now know. And why do you think we're so much stronger than you? This was seven minutes, was it not? Yes. <laughs> seven seconds. <laughs> okay. Also, I knew, I knew the, um, this was really the last film we shot the 35 millimeter, and I think that I don't think that we could have gotten the light to respond to digital as we had respond here to the um, 
the black and white. It was something that was sort of something that we didn't quite expect, and then we just and what we basically did is that we respond. We have two windows in the studio, which face east, um, and we would start filming some some of the sequences at four in the morning, time lapsing them and letting them. And then as the sun got a little bit higher, we would position mirrors in the room at various points which we had, had marked out. So as the sun made its journey, it would click and realign with certain mirrors, and we were ready with the camera to catch them at certain points. <coughs> Some days it was very, very cloudy, and there were these fantastic clouds racing across the sun, and we went, God, oh, this is terrible, it's like, shit, you know. But then we suddenly realized there was all this deep, like electricity that really, tr that really represented her psychic state, and it was, you know, going and fitting with music, obviously, that um, we we realized that we also had a nice uh, discovery. This gentleman, this gentleman, in fact, very commonly. This is more a, a comment, I think, than, than a question, but. Um, one of the things that, that helps me, and I think most of, of us navigate living in, in the world, is that there's there's some degree of predictability about our experience, uh, our day-to-day -day experience. Um, but this is my first time encountering your, your films, and what I found was that all of the different worlds that you kind of present to us are completely unpredictable. Um, and, they're, and yet, there's, they're, they're filled with repetition in, in a lot of ways, and yet it's completely unpredictable repetition. And, and I think that just that, that, that experience of watching these things and feeling like I should be able to predict what's coming next, but, but never being able to, uh, even with the opera, with, where you take a, a, a common myth and, and frustrate our expectations with how it's going to, with what's going to happen. Nothing in, in here is, is predictable, and, um, and I, I loved that. Um, and I hated it at the same time. It's, it's, a, it's a very uncomfortable feeling to, to be in a, to, to enter into a world that, uh, that you can't predict anything. So. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, please. Oh, um, so uh, when you said 35 millimeters, something just clicked, and I wanted to ask you a question about um, potential non-filmic sources for inspiration, perhaps. Um, two names came to mind very quickly. Um, one was.